Oh, that's a big one. It looks like a, uh, just like a giant meteor just crashed into someone's yard. So here's the thing. Sinkholes are a phenomenon that freak me out. How can the ground be sturdy one second and then before you know it, it's sucking up buildings and cars and children? So what causes sinkholes? And can we predict them? There's a popular holiday spot in Queensland, Australia, where this has happened more than three times. The people didn't see it coming. You drive, mate. Jason and wife Mel nearly lost their caravan that night. There was a lot going on that night, that's for sure. And then you could just keep hearing this funny thud, thud sound. So it was a really humming noise. It was sort of a boom, boom, boom sort of noise. I didn't know what to think. It was the sound of sand collapsing into the ocean, just metres from the campsite. And it was, of course, hard to see at night because it was dark. Yeah, no one knew what would what it was or what was going on. They knew it was just coming in closer and faster and we just had to get out of there. But the amount it was dropping was crazy, how quick it was going. Partners and kids and wives and whatever running around and screaming and crying. It turned to a bit manic and people were just throwing things in like we didn't even have time to fold our beds up. We just threw tables and chairs on the, <laughs> on the bed. Yeah, it was like a, a war zone down there. We just managed to get it out in time, so we had to basically tell or scream at people to get out of the way. Literally, if we waited any longer, I don't think we'd have our car and caravan. Mate, go to that land cruiser! Jason and Mel were lucky. The campers next door lost their caravan and car. People with you know, generators and gazebos and some chairs and fire pits and so on all went missing. You know, they were just, yeah, couldn't get to them in time and uh, just gone down the hole. Yeah, it's memory that we'll never forget. <laughs> Headlines dubbed it a sinkhole, but what happened at Inskip Point was something else entirely. Now look, it's often thought of as being a sinkhole because it uh, looks a bit like a sinkhole, like it's disappearing, you know, before, before your eyes. In fact, it's just, a, it's a slope instability. There was one crucial thing missing, a hole. A, a sinkhole is normally um, a near circular feature, and this is not, this is like an arc. It's a bit like taking a spoon, a large spoon, and taking a bit of a scoop out of the coastline. Sitting at the gateway to the largest sand island in the world, Inskip Point is part of an unstable sandy peninsula. So what we see at Inskip, these sub-vertical pillars of sand, they, it's just a precarious um, uh, equilibrium. Normally, we don't find sand piled that way in a natural condition. Too wet, too steep. Besides, every now and then, to, to give way. When it does give way, it falls off in vertical chunks. And it's held up temporarily by what we call suction in the sand. And then all of a sudden that gets swamped, it gets saturated, and all of a sudden you lose it again. It forms another almost vertical slope. Like a sandcastle, wet sand helps the shoreline stay upright. So it's just basically what permits kids to build sandcastles. If you wet it a little bit, it gets almost um, subvertical. But if you wet it too much, uh, it gets washes out by the water. You know, nature's a pretty powerful force. The ocean triggers this rare phenomenon. But what causes a true sinkhole? So sinkholes are different, but they're still related to water or water flow. Basically, they are cavities or pits in the ground that form when water erodes uh, or an underlying lock layer. And then the, the ground above that uh, that uh, developing sinkhole gives way. It's rare, but there have been unexpected cases in Aussie backyards. We get them in urban developments. We get them in uh, sometimes and occasionally in the city. In the worst case, not so much in Australia, but in other parts of the world, we've, we've had sinkholes that are big enough to consume a house. Urban sinkholes are usually the product of humans meddling underground. If we think about what's happening nowadays, digging, uh, extraction, mining activities, increases the intensity and frequency of the collapse of sinkholes. So because of anthropic activities, we will expect this to happen more frequently. You could say, you know, what proportion of the Earth's surface has, has uh, actually experienced a sinkhole? And that proportion would be minute, you know, <laughs> so small you wouldn't even count it. I mean, it's certainly not worth people getting stressed about it, that, uh, oh, we might have a sinkhole beneath us, we might all disappear in a hole suddenly. Uh, I think that's going a bit too far. 